Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section of the lectures, we are going to build the REST APIs for simple banking application. Well, we are going to build add account REST API, get account REST API, deposit amount REST API, withdraw amount REST API, get all accounts REST API and delete account REST API. So these are the simple REST APIs that we are going to build for banking application. So just let us jump into the you know browser. So I am in a Chrome browser and open the new tab over here and just type start.spring.io this will bring up spring initializer and here select the project marvin and choose the language java and let us keep the stable version of spring boot as of now that is 3.2.1 so this this is the latest and stable version of spring boot as of now next go to the project metadata over here and here let us give group as net.java guides and let's give artifact as banking app next project name is same as artifact that is banking app next description let us give the description something like demo project for spring boot banking app next let us give package name as net.javagates.banking next let us keep packaging as a jar and let's keep java version 17 Next go to the dependency section over here and here just search for web and let us select this spring web starter dependency. Well we use this dependency to build the restful APIs and this dependency internally provides Apache Tomcat server as a default embedded container. So let us select this dependency. Next let us type spring data JPA. Well we are going to build the JPA repositories using spring data JPA. Well, this Spring Data JPA dependency internally provides latest version of Hibernate. Okay, so let us select Spring Data JPA over here. Next, type MySQL. So we are going to use MySQL JDBC driver to connect our, you know, Spring Boot application with the MySQL database. Next, let us select the Lombok dependency. Well, we are going to use Lombok dependency to reduce the boilerplate code such as getter setter methods constructors to string equals and hash code methods okay so let us select lombok dependency over here all right so as of now these dependencies are enough for our spring boot application next go ahead and click on generate button over here so before that you can also explore the spring boot application using explore option over here so just click on explore and here go to the pom.xml file and you can see the spring boot version java version and the dependencies as well okay perfect next click on close button and go ahead and click on this generate button to generate the spring boot application as a zip file okay next go ahead and open this zip file in a folder perfect next let us unzip this zip file all right next let us open the IntelliJ idea so here i have opened IntelliJ idea Next click on open option over here to open the existing project. In my case, the project is downloaded in a downloads folder. So let me go into the downloads folder over here. And next let me select the project. Let me click on open. Now we have successfully imported the Spring Boot application in IntelliJ IDEA. Next, let us go ahead and let us start you know, developing this Spring Boot application. Next step is we will configure the MySQL database in our Spring Boot application so that our Spring Boot application can be able to connect to the MySQL database. So go to the SRC folder and go to main folder, go to resources, go to application.properties file. So here inside application.properties file we are going to configure the MySQL database details. Okay. So before configuring MySQL database details in the application.properties file, let us first create the database in a MySQL server. So in our case, we are going to use MySQL Workbench to interact with the MySQL server. So here, let me quickly create the new database. So here, let us write the SQL statement, create database followed by the database name. So let us give database name as banking app. Next, let us select this, click on execute and next refresh schemas. And here you can see banking app database is successfully created next we can make this you know schema or database as a default so that we can 
only focus on this database. Next, let's go back to IntelliJ IDEA over here and go to application.properties file. And here, let us configure the, you know, MySQL database properties. So just type spring dot data source dot URL equal to GDBC and then MySQL and then localhost and then port 3306 and then followed by the database name banking underscore app. So this is the GDBC URL that our Spring Boot application will use to connect with the MySQL database and here we are using localhost because our MySQL server is running in a you know local machine that's why the host name is localhost and this is the default port for a MySQL server and this is the database name. Next let us configure the MySQL database username and password. So here spring dot data source dot username in my case the username is root next let us configure the password spring dot data source dot password well in my case this is the password but make sure that whatever the database username and password that you have given while installing the mysql database that you have to provide over here next let us tell hibernate to automatically create the tables using jp entities for that let's configure the property spring dot jp dot hibernate dot dtl hyphen auto equal to update all right so this property basically ensures that the hibernate should you know create the database tables automatically based on the jp entities that that we will create in the spring boot application Next, we no need to add Hibernate Dilate for a MySQL database because Spring Boot 3 internally uses Hibernate 6 and Hibernate 6 will automatically configure the Hibernate Dilate for a database based on the JDBC driver dependency that we add in the Spring Boot application. In our case, we have added MySQL JDBC driver. So Hibernate 6 will automatically configure the Hibernate Dilate for a MySQL database. Okay, perfect. Next, let us run the Spring Boot application so that we can make sure that our Spring Boot application can able to connect to this banking app database. So go to our main entry point class over here and from here, let us run the Spring Boot application and here click on enable button to enable the Lomba connotations and notice here there are no errors in a console logs. It means our Spring Boot application is successfully connected with the MySQL database. Next step is we will create a JP entity. So before that, let's quickly create the packaging structure for our Spring Boot application. So right click on the base package, new and then choose package. Let's give name as entity. Next, let's create one more package. Right click new and then choose package. Let's give package name as controller. Next, right click new and then choose package. Let's view package name as service. Next, let's create one more package. Let's call it as repository. Perfect. Next, go to entity package. Right click on it. New and then choose Java class. Let's view class name as account. Next, let us define the fields for this account class. Private long ID and then private string let's give name as account holder name and then private double balance well to keep it simple let us have these three fields for our account class next let us make this class as a jp entity by using jp annotations so let us annotate this class with add entity annotation to make this class as a jp entity next let us configure the table details by using add table annotation so here let's use name attribute to give a name to the table let us say accounts perfect next let us use lombok annotations to automatically create a getter setter methods for this account class so here let us use add getter lombok annotation and next let us use add setter lombok annotation 
Next, let us also use the constructor related annotations. For example, no argument constructor and all argument constructor annotation. Next, let us use few more JP annotations over here. So go to the ID field and let us annotate this ID field with at ID annotation to make this ID field as a primary key in a database. Next, let us use at generated value annotation to configure primary key generation strategy. So this annotation has a strategy attribute and let us give the generation type as an identity. So this will basically, you know, automatically increment the primary key. Next, here let us use at column annotation to configure the column name for this field. So here let us use name attribute and let's give column name as account underscore holder underscore name. Okay, perfect. Now we have created account JP entity. Next, let us run this, you know, Spring Boot application and let us see whether the Hibernate will automatically create a table for this account JP entity or not. Okay. So go to main entity point class over here. From here, let us run the Spring Boot application. And notice here there are no errors in the console. Let's go to database and go to banking app database. Refresh this image. Go to tables and there we go. Accounts, you know, table is created and the columns like ID, account holder name and balance. It means the table is successfully created and the columns are also, you know, looks good. Okay, so let's go back to integer idea. Next step is let us create Spring Data JP repository for this account entity. Okay, so go to a repository package, right click on it, new and then choose Java class, choose interface, and here let us give the interface name as account repository. Perfect. Next, let us extend this interface from JPA repository interface and notice here JPA repository interface is a generic so we have to pass two parameters first is the entity name in our case account second is the type of the primary key in our case long okay so if you go to account JPA entity so we have given the long you know type to this ID field right so this long we are passing as a second parameter to this JPA repository interface Okay, great. Well, once we create account repository interface that extends JP repository interface, then this account repository will get a crude database methods to perform crude database operations on this account JP entity. All right, perfect. 